Thank you for joining us at the Chain Film Festival. I'm here with Sarah Bartley, correct? Yes, correct. Yes, five second rule, the hysterical and disturbing film (laughs) um, that just won all of our hearts that you've just seen. Um, Sarah, oh my God, I I hate the general question, but please tell me this isn't uh, based on some kind of a disgustingly true story or something. <laughs> it's loosely based. Oh no. Story. I know, I know. I, well, a lot of my comedy, I would say the majority of my comedy always comes from a real life experience. And then my crazy brain going, <gasps> taking it 10 steps farther. But what if it had been dot, 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 dot. Yeah. So, it actually started what it got cut out of the short film, but initially part of the story was um, that I'm wearing uh, a jumpsuit, which notoriously for men and women who wear them, when you have to go to the bathroom, you basically have to strip all your clothes off. So that's kind of where that started and then evolved into the disgusting, amazing absurdity that is. Yes. <laughs> um that i mean the tale of brunch you know and you just you never see it coming i i really enjoyed it um it could be a horror film actually when you really think about it <laughs> i was gonna say that it really it, it borders it borders the line of comedy and horror which is a rare thing so congratulations on creating a new genre <laughs> thank you <laughs> um and your performance is so wonderful in it um so you wrote and you starred in this Obviously. Yes, and I directed it as well. Yes. And you directed it as well. Correct. It's yeah. it's just it's wonderful and it looks great. Um, this is really difficult stuff here that you suck people in so far. Like it's <laughs> and and there's no turning back from it. Like you're completely in watching this. There's no <laughs> your mind can't go anywhere else but be stuck <laughs> like in those moments. <laughs> with this woman in this terrible circumstance but it's just like right from the beginning even before it hits the scary part it's it oh, uh, you're in it you're in it to win it great um, thank you that means a lot that, so um, what yeah. what was that like um working and directing yourself is this is this normally how you work um with a smaller comedy piece like this yeah it, it is it kind of um it wasn't necessarily when I started in comedy and started writing my own stuff, I initially didn't think of directing myself. Um, but then it kind of, I think I was really inspired by a lot of screenwriters or writer directors who were like, when you write it, direct it as well, you vision it, like you can see it through to the end. Um, so that really is kind of how that all started. But then I'm really lucky. I mean, five second rule, the cinematographer, Chris Ford, who also co-produced it with me, He's so insanely talented and just amazing to work with. And then uh, the guys that I got to work with, Raja, Aaron, and Adam, they're so funny. They're all in their own right, solid, just amazing creators and actors. And so I kind of stacked the deck in my favor for sure, which makes it easier when you're directing, when you're also in it, uh, just kind of surround yourself with people better than you and then (laughs) you look good too well being with people you know and in that kind of a circumstance and having that shorthand and everybody knows the deal and there's no hey who is this person what are their you know like there's none of that and you remove that from the situation and just set yourself up for success um we obviously you know want to support uh you know creators who go through to the finish line and uh and this is a, one of those cases, again, of that. Um, it's just wonderful. I'm curious about um, the most disgusting bathroom. Uh, I, mean, I can't say it's the most disgusting bathroom I've ever seen because we live in New York City. Right. But um, it, it, it definitely um, is realistic. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, is, <laughs> what was the set design <laughs> situation? Well, I, I feel so bad. So the bar is actually uh, in New York. It's on uh, Columbus between 106 and 105. It's called Bob's Your Uncle. Uh, my friend actually owns it, and she's a huge champion in, of any work I do. So anytime I'm creating like this, writing, directing, and starring in it, I tend to always write something where then I can be at Bob's Your Uncle and film because they're just a really amazing supportive space for um, artists. And I did say to her, I said, Danielle, you have the most beautiful bar, but can I make the bathroom look super disgusting? And she was like, yeah, we'll just like, people will know that that's not really what it looks like, but yeah, let's make it super gross. So I basically collected trash. 
um, for like <laughs> a week <laughs> before the shoot and asked if anyone else had anything gross that they wanted to bring along because that particular shoot we did separately and it's it was just me, um, the sound engineer and Chris, the cinematographer, because obviously I'm not in a lot of clothes or anything like that. So we kept it a really closed exclusive set. Um, but yeah, and then I just made it really, her beautiful bathroom really, really disgusting. So it was a lot of just trash and like torn up paper and glasses that from the bar and just kind of filling it with juice and just putting stuff around. It's the, it's the wet floor that really <laughs> takes it to the next level too. <laughs> the wet floor, which is in every brunch i feel like that that's a sense of like realism that i really wanted like every bathroom at a drunk brunch is disgusting so, <laughs> here it is yeah yeah but it, it looks like a beautiful uh bar or restaurant um it looks it really looks and then you go to the bathroom but like right. that's not unrealistic for new york city <laughs> yeah. and that can happen very quickly at any kind of establishment anywhere that some a uh, degenerate comes in <laughs> and just tears <laughs> apart the bathroom <laughs> for no reason. Yeah, exactly. The staff hasn't even known and they were there like three minutes ago. Right, exactly. Uh, exactly. So. Yeah. <laughs> your, your friends should not feel bad, but they look like they have a beautiful place. Yeah, they um, recommend if anyone's around, please go and support them. <laughs> so I did laugh out loud um, for real. And uh, I think that this is uh, so much fun and I want to see more of your work. I, I can't wait to see more of your work. Thank Can you tell the audience where they see more of your stuff? Yes, um, I actually have a digital comedy series out right now um, with Chuckler Comedy and Meeting House Production here in New York. Um, it's all on Facebook Watch um, under Chuckler Comedy. And I also, we have our own uh, Instagram handle that's called Bettina and Trey. So the series is called Bettina and Trey BFF Till Death. Um, and every episode is also on IGTV. So, and the, all that information as well as information about Chain Film Fest, you can find on my Instagram, Hey, it's Bartley. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Shara, welcome back to the Chain Film Festival. How, this is your third go round, right? Yeah, this is a trifecta. I'm so happy to be here virtually with you. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, normally we get to meet under very different circumstances, but um, it's just important that we're all getting to see each other again. I don't but, know why. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> no, I mean, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed in the world at all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the the packed lobbies and the packed uh, screenings. No. Uh, I don't, I don't know why we're not doing it right now, but here we are. Um, it's always such a pleasure to talk to you and to see your work. Um, I really I really enjoy the comedic take on this uh, particular piece. Um, you've done some more serious pieces for us in the past. Um, and this this is really funny and uh, I think really relevant to the time we're living in. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. Yeah, so trying to play like it's it's actually pretty uh, you know it's pretty interesting that you chose to do this at a, a really uh, most of the you know most of the films that we're focusing on bad behavior of men to to but we're also now looking at like what what it means to be woke and like the restrictions of being woke. Um, so well, that's you could exactly talk a little bit where about it that. kind of came from. Like I. You know, I, growing up, I never like labeled myself as a feminist, but as I grew older, I realized like, yeah, I am a feminist. And, you know, with all the feminist things that have come into our awareness in the past couple of years, uh, very brightly, uh, it really made me wonder like, what does a feminist look like? What does a feminist have to look like? And like, do you have to subscribe to all of the traditional like feminist tropes? to care about women and women's rights and things. Yeah. And it's like, no. So I really just wanted to poke fun at that in a really fun way. Yeah. And I think it's really lighthearted too. It's, um, it's, it's, it's actually, you know, like even watching it, 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 it makes me like, because we're so used to watching comedy now, even stand up bits that are from the past or things that like you start going, Oh, you start to cringe, like, like, uh Oh, where am I allowed to watch this? And like, I, I, I don't want to feel that way. I want to be able to watch everything too. Yeah. So that's why I really enjoyed this too, because it's, it's a really lighthearted way to, um, to point out some of the, 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 uh, ideas, you know, the, the, what's, what's okay and what's not. Um, 
uh, can you can you talk about how some of those bits uh, were generated or like was this all scripted? Was it some of it improvised? I mean, it was all scripted. Stuff, so. okay. I'm I'm a very big you know write it all down girl. But this film did happen very quickly. So I have another film that I really wanted to direct. And most of the things that I've done in the past, I've acted in, I've written, I've produced, but I wasn't really wearing the director hat. And people in my world were like, Shara, you need to direct your own stuff. Like you need to bite that bullet. And I had this other project that was like really complicated um, that I'm just starting to submit to the festival circuit right now. Um, but I wanted to do another film first before I did that, that I can make all of my mistakes on. And mm -hmm. that if it was terrible, I could just kind of go, okay, I did that and that was that. Um, so this had like the lowest budget I think I've ever worked with. Um, I, I saw the NBC shorts, the finals, and I noticed that all of the comedies that were in that screening block were all um, issue driven, they were all diverse, um, and they're all like short shorts. And I came out of that and was like, I want to make a film that fits those specs. I went home, I wrote it, it was a Tuesday night, I wrote it on a Wednesday. I cast it and crewed it between uh, Thursday and Friday, and we shot it on Saturday. It happened. That's awesome. I, it, it was one of those like, this needs to happen right now. Now, Post was another story and lasted many months because fun fact, we couldn't use any of the sound on set. Oh. So it's all fake sound. So um, ADR in my living room with voiceover equipment, sending to my sound designer friend in Argentina, working remotely <laughs> and we pulled it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, so shooting outdoors uh, didn't go uh, as expected with the sound, I'm assuming. No, we had, like, something happened. There was, like, something with the equipment, and then there were cicadas because it was August, and, you know, yeah, cicadas in the park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, look, we've all been there, and it's every time that I shoot anything, I run up halfway through the shoot, always turning around and going, the sound it's always the sound like no matter how much you plan it and think about it like you can never wind up in this perfect maelstrom unless you're on a set or inside or have control over everything that yeah and they say happen. like oh you could just fix it in post and we did but it was a huge process that did not need to be as lengthy as or in depth as it was but you know movie magic yeah, no, and I think it's a great, I think it's a great uh, lesson, and I think it's a great testament to filmmaking, too, because we constantly all go through the same thing, too. How often are we shooting things, and then, like, I, I don't have any sound, <laughs> or, or it's like, you know, like, somebody was there for that day who was, like, on the, on the headset, and, like, it's like, you didn't hear any of this? <laughs> well, my so next film, like, that will be on the circuit is completely silent with, like, orchestration. So I think I'm just, like, <laughs> living in this, like, silent world for right now for a bit. I think that's what happened, right? You're, like, you just were like, no, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a really fun, uh, it's a really fun piece. Um, and I, I just love the, the levity that it brings um, to the festival. And uh, I want to thank you so much. For sharing. Thank you so uh, much for having me. Go see it. Have you. Yeah, and please send us your next film. Excited to see you it. You know I will. The chain is like home fest to me a little bit. Like I, I love what you guys do with the fest. I love the community that you build with it. You always show such great films, um, and you are a hometown festival for me. So I, I love. I will absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and if you could just give a plug for yourself of where people can find some of your stuff. So you can see my stuff um, all over the place right now. So I, you can watch uh, the Homemade Sketch Show, my series that's on Tubi TV. I'm doing a couple micro series on Rizzle. Um, one's called the 311. One is actually a um, chopped up version of Faustus that was in your festival before. Um, you can find me on all the socials, Shara Ashley Z, um, and that can pretty much link you to all the stuff I'm doing. <laughs> Awesome, Shara. So nice to talk to you again, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Kurt. How you doing? I'm here with Jeff Amy from 
So what do you think? <laughs> I love, love this short film. And I am, again, if you're listening to the talkbacks here, what you're going to hear from me, um, because it is a, is a similar thing, that I just love super shorts and the amount of information that you can fit into a short period of time. Um, particularly when you have the right actors and you have the right director and you tell a story so clearly and you realize like, oh, I've seen things that are two hours long that I don't get the sense of uh, commitment that I do from this short film. So congratulations on that because it oh, so comes through. Thanks so much. That's that's so nice of you. Um, so the the actors that you chose for this, did they know each other beforehand or was this just a great casting situation? They did. And um, when um, our producer, Karen Tusa, approached me and said, you know, who should I go after? Uh, who would you like to cast in this? Uh, they were my top picks. And um, they have done a couple of films before. I think they may have been in a Hallmark film together. Nice. And, but, and so we knew that they had some chemistry, right? And um, yeah, they, they uh, really, really took the material and elevated it for sure great cast it's great when people just have that shorthand and sometimes you get lucky when you cast people that haven't met and then you just get that lightning in a bottle people their chemistry when they first meet and then other times like it's just it's great to work with people that already know each other too um as a theater company we uh like to work with people over and over again because you know them and you have that shorthand already and you know like how quickly you can get something from them or like just work together and um I wanted to talk about uh, the, this relationship that's uh, the, you know, the prominent part of this film. Um, how deep of a dive did you have to go into the backstory or, or was just what we read on the pay, what we saw on the film and they, they filled in the blanks? Um, well, I wanted to, um, I wanted to make something that was relatable and um, a real sort of, you know, something that people would immediately pick up on and go, Oh yeah, I've been there. And so um yeah, it was certainly drawn from real life, <laughs> the premise and, <laughs> and a lot of the, a, a lot of what was said. Um, uh, but uh, the actors did certainly bring uh, life to the characters and life to the those moments. So um, I'm not sure how much backstory is really required for two people who love each other and kind of get in each other's way sometimes. <laughs> and and yeah. that's, you know, that happens to everybody. I was going to say that, you know, uh, in the middle of the pandemic now, I think a lot of people can relate um, to this story in this situation. I'm yeah, I'm sure that more people are painting poorly than ever before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also love the fact that you're able to make this commentary on abstract art and what it is and like someone not getting it as opposed to someone who does. Um uh, so much like so many things happen so quickly in this like you know like someone needing just reassurance like what's wrong with that we all need a little reassurance every now and again um, right yeah 100 percent. I, I think we all can relate to that and the, and the crux of what that is uh to a relationship yeah and it's it's about the eye of the beholder all the time when it comes to art and when it comes to relationships too and and um you know, I, I was sort of messing around with that idea by entitling the film. So what do you think? Because, you know, the short film is also a piece of art and <laughs> could certainly be interpreted however you want to interpret it uh, as you view it. And um, it's kind of the great thing about art and also the really scary thing if you're if you're the creator. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, it's it really like uh, making films. Uh, and putting it out there, it's always the most nerve wracking thing to me that mm -hmm. I've ever done is that it's done and it's out there. And it, while it's playing in front of people, you have no control over it. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm a I'm a I've been writing for a long time, but I've only been directing shorts for a few years now. And this would be, I think, my fourth short film. And uh, directing is just an entirely different ball game when you are sort of the prow of the ship and uh, it's your you know, you're, you're very directly associated with, uh, with the film itself It is definitely nerve wracking. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're, you, you know, you are putting yourself out there much more than if you're just one part <laughs> of the, of the whole thing. So there's no deniability now. <laughs> yes. I, I have said it out loud. I've said, I have no, if this doesn't work, there's no one to blame. 
except yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of uh, oh. work and, and, and just a microcosm of a larger relationship. Uh, how long did you shoot for? It was a one day shoot. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you do a lot in that short period of time, man. Um, I just want to thank you so much for joining us and sharing uh, your work. And uh, if you give the audience a shout out to where they could find some more information about you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, well, um, I guess the best place to go is actually my website, which is amy.com, E-Y-A-M-I-E.com. Um, and uh, more info on IMDB as well, of course. But um, I'm trying to think. Uh, and of course, uh, we've got a page on Facebook. I don't think we have a website for this little guy. Um, but uh, I can definitely point people in the right direction there. And thank you so much for including us in your great festival. I mean, being a, a little group from Winnipeg, um, we are Winnipeg. I often tell people we're like the opposite of New York. It's like a terrible place to visit, but you'd really want to live there. I think that was like, <laughs> like a saying in the seventies for New York. Anyway, uh, um, Winnipeg has a fantastic community and uh, uh, film community and cultural community. And we have long winters where we all sort of create together. And um, just if it wasn't for the generosity of all the, the crew and cast, I mean, uh, I don't think this film gets made the way it does in any other place. So I'm, I'm really grateful that we can take it out of that sort of hidey hole that is Winnipeg, Canada, and uh, get it to the chain festival is really fantastic. So thank you so much. Well, we're so happy to have you here and be able to talk across um, you know, countries and time zones and everything else. Um, and we hope that we get to see you in person at the Chain Theater. A hundred percent. I will buy you a bowl of ramen as soon as I get there. <laughs> I definitely look forward to it and I look forward to meeting you in person. Um, but thank you again for joining us. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kurt. Thank you so much for joining us. We have the team of No Reservations here, and if you could introduce yourselves real quick. Hi, I'm Hannah Chiclana. I'm the writer of Reservations, and I also played Beck. Michael Carvanis, and I am the director of Reservations. Well, I have to say uh, that I think that this is a, a wonderful film. I think it's really, really funny. And it's such a brilliant idea that I don't think I've ever seen before, and it's so hard to have an original idea in this world. But it's this great circumstance of finding people from different walks of life, finding places to put them together and at odds with one another. Um, can you talk about the idea where this brilliant idea came from? It almost feels like the perfect sitcom kind of set up, um, hey. but I've never seen before. Yay. Oh, that's so good to hear. Um, yeah, I actually, I was sleeping <laughs> and I woke up and it's one of those like ideas that hit you. Um, and so I immediately grabbed my phone and wrote it down like in my thing. And I was like, strangers stuck in a cabin, bad reservation, like full sleep mode. And it was at the time that I was in grad school at uh, Savannah College of Art and Design, that's where me and my Michael met. And um, they were talking a lot about how they, you needed to create your, your, create your own content. That's what we kept hearing, create your own content, create your own content. So, um, I just thought of my friends and what cool, fun characters we could play and made them all um, come together in a wackadoo way. So this was a student film? Yeah, and I originally, my the idea was, I, and I wrote a couple more episodes um, and just because of editing and, and whatnot, it ended up being a, a short film, but the long game goal, it's like I had a dream would be, yeah, this would be a sitcom that could continue on it's so hard to find the original idea and i really think that you you cracked it so well and, 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 and that's only so good as the execution of it too like <laughs> the fact that like you had this brilliant idea and 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 if you're a writer what what uh, hannah's talking about does happen and sometimes those those little epiphanies go off into the distance forever because <laughs> you didn't write it down at that moment so thank heavens that you managed to do that yeah. at that time um and Michael, could you talk a little bit about um, the process of working with so many characters that are so clearly defined uh, in this uh, short amount of period of time? And that's what the great essence of a short film is, is to be able to introduce people quickly. It doesn't feel like it's hit and run. It doesn't feel 
um, like like it's just an afterthought or, or that you're getting this exposition dumped on you. Um, they're really real form characters that everyone has. Right. Well, as Hannah said, this was conceived as a pilot episode for a sitcom. So our approach was that this was just the starting point. And so we already had these characters in mind for uh, many episodes. And I think the idea was in place that we could, we, this was the, you know, the setup and that we would see them develop over time. And so um, we, we had a bigger picture. <laughs> and so I think uh, as a result, the actors knew a lot of more about their backstory and they knew more about their character arcs. So I think they were more invested uh, in their performance than just um, a one-off short film would be. So I think that played into it quite a bit. And I think that's probably what you're seeing on screen because even while we were filming it, we were approaching this as a much longer piece, much longer narrative. Um, so when I came on board, the actors uh, all knew each other <laughs> and they were all in place. And um, basically my job was to um, control these outstanding performances and uh, these personalities who many of them knew each other, many of them um, were actually staying together in this cabin <laughs> over the course of filming. So, um, which is another story that I'm sure Hannah <laughs> can speak about, but it created the authenticity. And so I uh, had the challenge really of capturing the, some of the spontaneity and some of the um, just naturalness of uh, each character. And so it was more um, performance driven, really, my approach to directing it, it was less uh, letting you know, the cinematography guide it as much as the uh, performance and the character and even the dialogue. Uh, this was a very dialogue rich uh, screenplay when we started out. And uh, I think, you know, we kind of had to cut some of it away. So the end result is really uh, performance based. And um, it was fun to do that for a change. That's really cool. Um, I really love this idea that everyone's going to be stuck in this area <laughs> together. Was that the overall concept that they would have had to spend a summer together? Yeah. Or was it so, okay? Yeah. So each of them had a reason why they uh, reserved this cabin for a month. Um, you know, like the married couple, it was by their therapist. They told them that this was how they're going to get their marriage back on track, and so they had that reason. And and Beth had been gone on like an eat, pray, love situation um, to find herself after this divorce that she had. So um, she was just so sick of roughing it in the woods and like needed a roof over her head. Um, so each, each peep and then a honeymoon and we and they're very competitive and like in this idea world where it was going to be episodes, it's the idea that they're in this area where um, it's like families come to like do like family competitions, kind of like, um, what's the area in New York where they go in the competitions? It takes place in Mrs. Mar uh, Mar the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Um, what is it? That skills? Yeah, so kind of like that, you know, so there was gonna be competitions and the guy I love, um, my family is really competitive. We get together every year and do these family competitions. So the whole idea of the relay race is very, very easy at home for me. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it, the, it, there was definitely like a reason why each of them were there and why each of them wanted to stay. Um, and we're going to stay no matter what. So um, yeah. But in, in the real world, while we're filming, the actors were actually staying together in a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ebenezer uh, Retreat Center in Savannah. They were so great. And especially because we were all students or just had just graduated. Um, they gave us a really nice price and they were like, you can stay here. And we were like, great. So we all like bunked up. It was really awesome. <laughs> but, but the problem was we only had four days to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to shoot everything in four days and there was no opportunity for reshoots or any, you know, any, any overages. <laughs> it was no. all happening in that short period. And our sound guy, there was no ADR either. Like it was, you get it now and that is all because all of us were dispersing um, afterwards. So that's amazing yeah well it's, you catch lightning in a bottle sometimes like that when you know you have to do it in a certain amount of time otherwise it's just not going to work um and so there was some mention of uh, it sounds like i should ask this because it sounds like there's some mention of you all living in this cabin together that there was some kind of uh, fiasco or something <laughs> oh in the cabin yeah no we just had a great time <laughs> okay good awesome yeah it was cool there was like uh, there was like two rooms that had tons of bunk beds 
And so it felt very campy just then. And then upstairs was this like long table. So we had like crafty up there and like that's where we would like have our meals. And it felt like a little camping weekend while we were creating art and ha creating laughs. And um, a lot of the performers are improvisers um, as well. So there are some lightning in a bottle situations where, you know, some of the humor that happened was like, I can't even take credit for it. I just, a lot of people say like 90% of a good product is, is the casting, is like who you pick for the, for the project with the directors and um, in casting and everything. So if you pick the right people, then some beautiful stuff can happen. Yeah, and I think it totally happened this time. Uh, I just want to say thank you again so much for joining us. It's a wonderful film. And uh, it's it just doing doing it all in 10 minutes. It's just, it's amazing. I'll, I'll never get over short films, how much you can do in a short period of time. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having, thank us. You for having us. Well, we have the crew of You're the Puppet here with us. We're so excited to show this film. Uh, it, it's just so cool. And I, uh, I have so much to ask you about. Um, so if you could just introduce yourselves, uh, that would be great. So I wrote and directed the film. Um, and then Chad, you want to go? Uh, yes, I was the, uh, the puppet builder and the puppeteer. So I guess also puppet choreography. <laughs> nice. Eric Anderson, I play Laramie, and I was also the voice of uh, Leonard. Nice. Um, this this uh, this film is really interesting because it it finds that level of satire that it points like it's it really is kind of feels real of a, this real relationship between a man and his other self or his puppet. Um, and I was curious of how all this works. So there was a puppeteer for a good percentage of this. I didn't even know. Um, yeah. He's totally, totally hidden from me. Uh, can you talk about the actual physical process, process of how that worked? Yeah, Chad. I mean, Chad actually built the puppet too from scratch. Like he, uh, we designed what we wanted and gave it to him and he went and bought the parts and made it. So you want to talk about that, Chad? Uh, yeah, uh, I've been uh, building puppets, uh, I guess, for about uh, almost 20 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I've been in various puppet groups. And so I built the puppet and then... Uh, uh, just working out the different, like I said, choreography for the puppet, but it's also for me of the different positions that I have to get in, in particular scenes, uh, like when the puppet sits on the couch or if he's, you know, at a table or we have to make it all look uh, like I'm not there. Yeah, and it's amazing to me to imagine figuring out how the camera angles and all of this work um, to have this object, uh, I'm always amazed by this kind of work. I really just am. I, I, I really dig it about how um, the heightened sense of awareness and that this character is actually more volatile than you'll ever usually see a puppet other than like a horror movie. Um, uh, can you talk about the, the writing process too for this and what inspired this? Yeah, I mean, so the whole thing came about because I met Chad on, on another project before this that he was acting in. And um, when we met, we talked about puppets and how much, you know, we both love puppets. And so like the whole time I was making that other project, I was like, I need to come up with something with puppets. And so it was it was it was a combination of that. And just, you know, I, I work with a lot of stand up comics. Uh, I love stand up comedy. So it was like it was a natural thing to bring those two together. Um, <clears throat> and then like you were saying, like the process, like you see a lot of these, if you look behind the scenes of a Muppet movie, they have a floor that's, you know, four feet up and there's a, a pup, puppeteer underneath doing this. And those scenes in their house was some of the hardest things I've ever shot. And usually like just a quick two com person conversation is real easy, but like Chad's on the floor, you know, squeezed down doing this, trying to make it look like he's out of frame. And uh, that's, it was just, it was, it was fun. You know, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's it's really uh, it's incredible. There's incredible writing here too, um, because the whole the whole circumstance of this really has to come back to the fact that it's going to be funny and it's going to be a stand up show, mm -hmm. and um, and so rarely do I see a co high concept piece like this where it just sticks the landing and like is genuinely funny with the act. Um, what was the process of uh, creating that act? Did, was this ever? tried out in front of people or you just knew you had it on no paper? yeah so um <laughs> for the first act that they do uh the first scene it was chad uh and who does you know a lot of uh, uh improv 
uh, comedy and uh, three other comedians I know. And we got together and we just brainstormed ideas. And when they left, I had, you know, two pages of ideas that I was able to then construct into an act. Um, and then the second one, we had a bunch of ideas already. Um, but the comedian, Pat Dean, who's in the movie as himself, he plays the host there. Uh, and he actually is the manager of that comedy club was just like laying on a bench and just throwing out one-liners for the puppet to say. <laughs> and that's almost exclusively what we use. The stuff that he was just like laying there, <laughs> say this, and we would say it and it would kill. And so we just kept doing that. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, bringing, it's, it's... Bring, bringing these experienced comedians in to help do that. I, I knew it had to be um, people at the top of their game too. And uh, like, that's the hard arc too for this. Uh, everything about this is hard. I think people would look at this and not really grasp how difficult this entire process is for this short film. Um, and Eric, you performing uh, with your partner the whole time is a puppet. So is, so it was, how much of that is um, you controlling the puppet or? Um. Well, there were, there were a couple of scenes like where you see Laramie and uh, Laramie and Leonard together. Um, Chad actually uh, coached me on how to, uh, you know, make the puppet move and eat just just eat in, in, in very, uh, very heavy detail as well. And um, or even when I met the uh, sitting at the bar um, and uh I had to, <laughs> I'm looking down at the, uh, the agent's card and having to move my hand. It's, 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 I had to do two things at once. I had to, it's like right brains controlling Leonard, left brains controlling Laramie. And it was, uh, that was um, uh, one, one of the hardest things I've done. There was a scene we tried to get where um, Leonard is throwing out all the ins throwing out all the uh, the you know the insults and roast at the end towards Laramie, and I just I, I couldn't I couldn't get this face correct where my uh, you know I had to, had to, had to, had to have a voice that's where Leonard is actually just screaming at the crowd and trying to make them laugh, and I have to have this concerned look on my face, but I just I could not stick that look, and it's and um, uh, one of the guys on set came up to us and said, dude, I don't even want to be doing what you're doing right now. <laughs> and it's, I, I, would, I just was kicking myself the whole time because I just, I could not get that correct. But, but for the, you know, the, the small amount of puppetry I did, Chad did a phenomenal job teaching me like the details on just, just how to move the puppet, just even just, <laughs> even little details like moving his eyebrows or, you know, you know, to, uh, you know, to get breathing, yeah. even just yeah. breathing. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Chad, you're such an artist uh, that that character is so fully developed throughout this. And um, and that right lane, right brain, left brain thing that you're talking about. I totally saw it. I totally like just as a performer, I, I was, you know, looking at that and I'm like, how difficult is this moment right now? And I've seen other uh, things where I've just been in awe of that, where you're trying to do two different things at once. Um the fact that the puppet is reacting differently than the character is reacting. That's that I, it, it hurts my brain to, to get, think about <laughs> to, to do that um, and find the balance in that. Um, and and are, are you a standup uh, by trade or a standup performer? Oh, Eric? oh, oh, oh um, stand up. No, I've, uh, I've, I've done a few open mics where um I, I guess bombing is modest, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, but there, there's been, you know, one of the things, one, it's the open mics that I have done, uh, did kind of prepare me for being on, st you know, you know, being on stage and you, even though I'm acting in front of, even though I'm acting in front of a crowd, um, but having the puppet made it that much more challenging. And, um, but it's as far as stand up by tr trade now. <laughs> okay, I mean, you just, you, you really, you, you feel comfortable up there in the movie. It really, it reads like, I, I was wondering and actually watching it, I was like, is, is this guy a stand up? Oh, no. It's, uh, but on the stage with the puppet, um, with those kinds of eyes on you, it's, 
it's I'm I'm hiding my anxiety very very well in those scenes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's but I'm I'm really glad that. Uh, but just that that was what really got me uh, focused off of that was the right and the left brain. Just trying to get the just trying to get that right, and um, it's that was that that made it much more easy to focus on. Well, you're a very brilliant performer and actor. Thank you very much. Thank you. I didn't see any of that anxiety at all. <laughs> I just I just saw you grappling with this uh, entity that was going to take over your life and eventually uh, seems to succeed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of got like a Twilight Zone thing too. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I just I also I really uh, have to say like I love the look of the film. It like it has that kind of uh, blue yeah mm -hmm. tint to it like it looks like that everything is designed I don't, I don't know how much is it or not but like even just the the color of the walls in his apartment yeah. look like they really they ring true for what um like the, there's, a, <laughs> there's a design element through this entire thing um and was that just by accident or is no that, that was just... that was definitely on purpose yeah yeah, that was that was that was definitely the our, our director of photography was very like he wanted to bring that blue color in uh, to to do that to, to make it kind of ominous when the puppet's alive in there uh, and match his color. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, um, and it's so well written and performed. Uh, I, I'm I'm so uh, happy to meet you all, um, and I hope that you all work together again soon because I would love to see either an extension of this story or uh, new ideas because uh, I know how difficult this is and you just nailed it. Yeah, we're, we're actually filming something this weekend, the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, you please, you reach out because I want to be, I want to be one of the first people to get a chance to see it. Oh, awesome. Um, awesome. Thank you, Will. thank you very much. Yeah, thank thanks. you all so much for joining us. For having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Brittany Lee Hamilton from Princess Problems. Thank you so much for joining us at the Change Hi. Film Festival. Thank you for having me. This is great. I just love this unique film. Uh, it's so... <laughs> It's so unique, and and uh, you know, I never thought of the reality of this this princess network that mm -hmm. apparently exists. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so I I'm an actor, uh, and for nine years, the side job of mine was being a princess for children's birthday parties. Uh, I was only on the weekends, so it was really great. Um, and every Sunday night, I would write down uh, the funny things that would happen. Uh, there were a lot, as you can imagine. And over time, I realized, wow, this would this could make a great film or a great series. Something has to be done with this. Uh, so I had a mentor who told me to create my own work, and I decided to write it. And it was so wonderful because the company I worked for was such a great resource to be able to dive into that and, and utilize so many of the things that they had. I, I can see um, that there's so much heart in this piece. And um, I'm curious, did you approach this just solely as a short film or as a web series kind of an no, idea? No, so the original idea, I knew I wanted to make a series. Um, when I found my director, uh, we had long conversations of, do we wanna try and make short web series? Do we wanna try and make just the pilot? Um, and we settled on short film for now that, eventually can become the proof of concept. Uh, just if all else fails, at least I made a film. <laughs> yeah, <of laughs> that course. was the thinking behind the short film version. Um, but the pilot is very similar. It's just a slight tweak at the end. So it's really not that different. I'm, I'm so curious what the set was like too, um, wrangling all those child actors who are, are magnificent in this. And obviously very natural. And I think, I, I feel like it has to be attributed to you and the presence that you had in that room. Well, they're actually all my students. Okay. I knew uh, I, something had to happen uh -huh. there. A couple of them, including the little girl who played Mia, I was actually Snow White for her third birthday. And then down the line, as I, as I stayed with the company, I, I started a performing arts, um, uh, just, just part of it where I would teach voice lessons and then acting lessons. Um, and all of those kids are my students. So we had rehearsals beforehand just to get them used to it. And I had already done some on-camera work with them. So they understood where not to look, what to do. Um, but the one thing they didn't really understand was the repetition. So on set, as, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> as great as they were, 
no, we have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And they were all at the time, seven and eight years old. So you'd get the, I'm tired, I'm hungry. You know, lunch was a half hour ago. But, um, <laughs> and I, I had told Maritza and I knew this too. I said, I'm like, look, I know these kids like the back of my hand and I'm going to be able to sense when they need a second. When that happens, I'm going to need you to give me five minutes. That's it. And sure enough, a couple times it happened. I said, I need that time. And I would take my wig off in my pin curls and I'd turn up like Katy Perry or something and we would just dance it out. And they needed that to just kind of get it out of their system, you know, and then they get a little snack, they'd sit down and we'd be good to go. So they That's were true brilliant. It's so brilliant. It's such a wise observation that if anybody's ever worked with children and I have several times and I used to work at a camp when I was a teenager, like if they do it and they do it right once, they don't ever want to do it again. A lot of times I did it. What's the matter? What's the matter? Yeah. Well, we got to get four other angles of that. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I was just looking at that and also uh, that that's the uh, party too. It was shot so brilliantly as well. Like mm -hmm. there is a real energy to that party. There's a real energy to your character, to what's happening and you see it turn. Um, yeah. I, I think that there's, it, it's, it's really subtle but it's so very, very clear. And uh, I was just, I was actually just marveled at that, that moment. I'm sorry to focus like on this one area because I oh, just yeah. marveled at like, there's so many things working at once. Like I know how hard it is yeah. to work with kids, your emotional stakes in the scene. And then the fact that the camera is really in it with you. Like you really get it and you feel for this person. Yeah. Very yeah, Caleb, um, Caleb Weiss was our DP. Um, and he is not one to work with children very often. Uh, so his energy in there was hilarious <laughs> with all of these kids running around screaming. Um, but he was so great with them to show them how the camera worked and what it was and, and exactly what this needed to be. And we let them just go crazy. And he was in the thick of it, really trying to get that, <laughs> that, that chaotic sense um, that that you would get from Jess holding the small cam. He was I, I feel it, yeah. And I mean, from your personal experience, is that way the way that a lot of those parties oh, it's exactly are? Exactly how it is. Yes, a lot of the lines even are taken from things that kids have said to me. Wow. Every and and every one of those kids, there's one of each of them at every party. Um, it's a lot of times you are by yourself. The parents will just leave you, okay. or they're watching you like this, you know, your every move. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very interesting. You never quite know what you're going to get and you got to be able to think on your feet and pivot at the slightest, slightest change. It's difficult. It's really, it's very really difficult. difficult. I see it. I see it in you and I see how honest it was in you and how, <clears throat> excuse me, how brilliant it was to be able to use a piece of your own life towards something like this. And you, you. Even reading the premise of it um, and then the execution of it, uh, it's a it's a great idea that's executed so so well. Um, Thank you. And you have a, such deep performance in it. Um, it's so honest. Thank I really you. would love to see more of it. Quite frankly, it's that's the it's, goal. That's yeah, the I, goal. I, I kind of had the feeling three like seasons. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the script's ready to go. Right. <laughs> I am ready. Proof of concept. I I've got the pitch. I am good to go. Um, but it's interesting what, what I noticed um, throughout the years, because I started princessing uh, right at the height of the frozen boom. Um, and I saw the, the switch from, you know, I'm, I'm a 90s girl. I was 90s princess. You know, that's where the big boom with Disney from Little Mermaid, their Beauty and Beast, Aladdin, all these women who are all about getting married and love, you know, and then all of a sudden Elsa comes along doesn't need a man. And it's like everything flipped. Um, and I saw the struggle playing out with parents who are very much anti-princess and yet they have a child who goes to kindergarten and comes home singing, let it go. You know, when they never had it in the house and they don't want the princesses, but the child does. Or the opposite, the child doesn't want it. And the parents are like, but you have to love Little Mermaid because I love Little Mermaid. So I was seeing the pro and anti princess argument playing out at these parties. And it's something I really wanted to explore um, as much as possible. 
Yeah, and I, I think this is such a great vehicle for you, um, as well as I just want to see more of your work because I think it was just a really layered performance. Thank um, you. Being able to play this, this Snow White character within this person and then doing a documentary, it's, it's a really brilliant approach, and uh, I hope you're able to make more of this. Me too. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> Thank um, you. So, um, and, and uh, can you tell everybody uh, where you're at, or they can learn more about your your? Do uh, you have a website or? Um, yep, yep. You, know? you can you can follow the uh, film at princessproblemsfilm.com. Um, you can also follow me at brittanyleehamilton.com. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brittany Lee Ham and at Princess Problems Film. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. I really appreciate it.